Welcome back on an epic journey, as we unravel the remarkable tale of Lu Sheng, a beacon of hope born in poverty, wielding the divine gift of strength to defy destiny and safeguard humanity from its impending reckoning. In the last chapter, Lu Sheng delves into the vast knowledge within the Fire Seed programs, discovering advanced techniques and scientific achievements. He resolves to focus on enhancing his strength, disregarding the opinions of those around him. Lu Sheng realizes that he can alter his future and that of humanity. Alright folks, let's set our sights high today, our goal is 600 likes. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. Lu Sheng went to school to collect his sponsorship money. At least say hello to me first next time, Zhang Zhengwo reprimanded him as he handed over a bank card, expressing some dissatisfaction. Understood, teacher Zhang, Lu Sheng replied calmly. Zhang Zhengwo wanted to say more, but seeing Lu Sheng's calm demeanor, he decided against it. Go, go. Come to the school to report at least once a week from now on, Zhang Zhengwo waved his hands helplessly. Yes. Lu Sheng put away his bank card, turned around, and left. As Lu Sheng departed, Zhang Zhengwo felt an inexplicable feeling in his heart. It was a strange sensation that he couldn't quite articulate. If forced to describe it, Zhang Zhengwo could still understand the original Lu Sheng, Lu Titi now he found himself unable to see through the changed Lu Sheng. This transformation had occurred in a remarkably short span of time. Shaking his head, Zhang Zhengwo resolved not to dwell on things he couldn't comprehend. Lu Sheng thought to himself, finally, I have some money. Walking out of Zhang Zhengwo's office, he felt a little more at ease in his heart for the first time. Of course, it would be wasteful to directly use this money to buy supplements. The best approach would be to purchase materials and make the tonics himself. Lu Sheng had recently obtained several tonic prescriptions from Fireseed, a kindling resource, and they were proving to be useful. Although these prescriptions were selected by the optical brain and could be realized in his era, determining which ones were suitable for the current Lu Sheng required further screening. The primary screening criterion at this stage was mainly cost. Lu Sheng found an internet cafe near the school and went online to calculate the cost of each prescription, identifying the most suitable ones based on cost effectiveness. Soon, Lu Sheng identified two medicines that were suitable for him muscle and blood enhancing potion, and bone nourishing pill. The constituent medicinal materials for these two tonics could be purchased on the market, and the prices were not expensive, falling within Lu Sheng's acceptable range. Although the effect of the bone nourishing pill was superior, Lu Sheng discovered that one of the medicinal materials needed to be freshly picked to be effective within a few hours, and its origin was not in Baihe City. Then I'll choose the muscle and blood enhancing potion. It happens that the preparation of this potion is relatively simple, suitable for a novice like me, Lu Sheng decided, firming his resolve. Now, there was only one question left for Lu Sheng to consider, where could he prepare the potion? Despite the simplicity of potion and medicine preparation, it required professional utensils. Even a slight difference in heat or dosage could significantly affect its effectiveness. Buying the set himself was unrealistic due to insufficient funds, making it best to rent someone else's equipment. Lu Sheng felt a sense of distress at this dilemma. Surely, there were places where drugs could be dispensed, such as drug research institutes, larger pharmacies, and pharmaceutical companies. However, the question remained, why would others rent their facilities to him? The blending room was an important space involving the commercial secrets of various pharmaceutical companies. It seemed implausible for individuals to enter casually, let alone borrow it for personal use. Forget it, Lu Sheng concluded. First, I'll buy all the medicinal materials needed for the muscle and blood-enhancing potion, and then I'll think of a way. Sir, are you kidding me? It's absolutely impossible, the pharmacist exclaimed, his face darkening as Lu Sheng's request was met with disbelief. Sensing the pharmacist's reluctance, Lu Sheng swiftly got up and left the establishment. The seventh house is really unrealistic, Lu Sheng muttered to himself as he exited the pharmacy, his expression reflecting a sense of helplessness. Despite having procured all the necessary medicinal materials for the muscle and blood enhancing potion, and even purchasing several extras, Lu Sheng was faced with rejection after rejection. To his surprise, the amount on the car provided by Zhang Zhengwo was not 30,000, but a generous 80,000. Speculating that the extra 50,000 might be Zhang Zhengwo's private sponsorship, Lu Sheng found himself grateful for the unexpected support. However, the process of renting a compounding room proved to be far from smooth. Despite his efforts, Lu Sheng was turned away by seven pharmaceutical companies and pharmacies. With little options left, he contemplated resorting to purchasing crude equipment online.
As his gaze fell upon the eighth pharmacy, Zheng Shantang, Lu Sheng straightened his clothes and steeled himself for another attempt. The rarity of the store name in Baihe City piqued his interest, prompting him to enter with determination. The pharmacy was small, with cabinets displaying various medicines. A young man in a white coat lounged on the counter, engrossed in his mobile phone. Upon hearing Lu Sheng's entrance, he briefly glanced up before returning to his screen. Feel free to browse, but remember to pay before leaving, he mumbled, adding a warning about the surveillance cameras in the store. With that, he resumed his phone activities, showing little interest in attending to customers. Lu Sheng observed the lackluster state of the store's business. Unlike other pharmacies where staff would engage customers, this clerk seemed disinterested, almost apathetic. Despite the uninviting atmosphere, Lu Sheng pressed forward, undeterred. Interrupting the young man's phone session, Lu Sheng's firm gaze caught his attention. Initially poised to retaliate, the young man softened upon meeting Lu Sheng's intense stare. What? Do you want? He finally asked, his demeanor subdued in the face of Lu Sheng's commanding presence. The young man took two quick steps back, casting fearful glances at Lu Sheng in his mobile phone. Lu Sheng, maintaining his calm demeanor, posed a question, Does your pharmacy have its own pharmacy dispensing room? Why do you ask? What if we do? replied the young man hastily, still uneasy. Lu Sheng lightly tapped the glass counter with a finger and continued calmly, If you do, I'd like to discuss a business opportunity with you. Five minutes later, Lu Sheng followed the young man to a door behind the pharmacy. The young man appeared nervous, reiterating the terms of their agreement, it's 500 for an hour, any time less will still be charged as an hour. You can use it for a maximum of three hours. And you'll need to pay 200 in advance. Lu Sheng simply handed over his card. The young man's eyes brightened as he swiftly swiped it, then retrieved a key to open the door. All right, go in quickly. Just be careful not to damage anything, or you'll be held responsible, he cautioned. I understand, Lu Sheng replied, stepping into the room. As the young man hurried back to the store, his joy was evident, despite his attempts to appear nonchalant. Lu Sheng inspected the room with satisfaction shining in his eyes. Although not large, the mixing room had all the necessary utensils, ample for his needs. It was evident that the pharmacists at Zing Shantang took great care of these tools, as each one gleamed with spotless cleanliness. Without wasting any time, Lu Sheng got to work. The young man who had agreed to rent the room had no authority to intervene, and Lu Sheng was determined to achieve his goal swiftly. Donning a white pharmacist's uniform and a mask, Lu Sheng began processing the medicinal materials one by one according to the prescription instructions for the muscle and blood enhancing potion. This step was crucial, even more so than the final mixing. Fortunately, the preparation of the potion was not overly complicated. It resembled an ordinary chemical experiment, albeit with a somewhat more intricate process. Carefully, Lu Sheng poured the boiled medicinal potion into a flask. I didn't expect the first time to go so smoothly, Lu Sheng thought to himself as he watched the liquid inside the flask gradually cool down, transforming into a beautiful light pink medicinal potion. A sense of satisfaction welled up within him, though true success could only be determined after experiencing its effects. Removing his mask, Lu Sheng tilted the flask and poured all its contents directly into his mouth. The potion flowed down his throat and swiftly into his stomach. He couldn't discern its taste, his focus solely on the impending effects. Waiting quietly for a few moments, Lu Sheng soon felt a surge of heat coursing through his body. It spread rapidly, reaching every corner within mere breaths. His muscle cells eagerly absorbed the energy, overwhelmed by the influx. Unable to withstand it any longer, Lu Sheng collapsed to the ground. A faint white mist emanated from his body as his blood surged, filling him with a sensation of fullness and vitality. After ten minutes, the sensation gradually waned and eventually disappeared altogether. However, Lu Sheng felt no adverse side effects. He knew he had succeeded. The effect of the muscle and blood-enhancing potion surpassed even his expectations, nearly ten times more potent than the nourishing blood powder he had previously consumed. What's more, its production cost was less than half that of the powder. Lu Sheng also noticed that his skin had become slightly firmer, as described in the prescription. In addition to strengthening the blood, the potion also enhanced skin density, reduced pores, and provided whitening and moisturizing effects. Reflecting on his success, Lu Sheng couldn't help but sigh with satisfaction. Suddenly, a loud bang on the door interrupted his thoughts. 
Lu Sheng opened the door with a blank expression as the young man outside urged him to hurry out, citing the imminent return of their boss. Without a word, Lu Sheng swiftly cleaned up the mixing room, gathered the prepared medicine, and exited. Thankfully, the preparation of the twelve muscle and blood-enhancing potions was completed without a hitch, marking a resounding success. Before departing, the young man generously shared his mobile number with Lu Sheng, indicating a willingness to engage in future business. It was evident that he intended to foster a long-term relationship. With twelve servings of the potion securely tucked away in his pocket, Lu Sheng's steps were confident and purposeful as he left the establishment. With this, the chapter concludes. Don't miss out on the next installment. Hit that subscribe button and join us for the continuation of Lu Sheng's remarkable story.